So, but how does this work? You have to explain. Oh, this one is a good one. Okay, I will speak about uh, uh, collision parameters governing water delivery and water loss in early planetary systems. I'm from the University in Vienna, in Austria, where we have a lot of water now, as you may have heard. There are some inundations. Okay, how does this? How can I go ahead with this? Oh, where is this is forward. Okay, great. So we have in Austria a big project now, Pathways to Habitability from Disks to Active Stars and Planets to Life. This is a collaboration of many universities in Vienna. And what you can see here is the university in Vienna in a nice big park. So when you come close to Vienna, come to see us. It's very nice here. Now, uh, what is the, in this project, I'm dealing with my colleagues of the transport of water and organic material in the early planetary systems. Well, it's a very difficult subject. It's not easy to do, but this is the goal. The main goal is to understand how water and organic material were delivered during the early stages, not only of our planetary system, but also of extrasolar planetary systems. Now, there was a, a dry planet is here, but there are water planets, and when do we have this water? Is this water coming because we have this kind of formation during collisions? Do we have, we have this formation of the moon? Where there was a big collision, did we lose all the water? There was this late heavy bombardment, so the question is how do we really, how does it work that we have a lot of water here on our Earth? Yeah, not only we need water also. Everybody needs water, as you can see, okay? Now, uh, there are two points. One is the collision statistics, and we found these collision statistics by numerical integrations, just in the Newtonian framework for many bodies in uh, um, distance to the sun between 0 0.9 and 1.1 astronomical units. And we took the bodies as mass points. We integrated with Lee series with ad adaptive step size to be able to deal with close encounters, uh, precisely treat these close encounters. And whenever two bodies came together as close as 0.0001 astronomical unit, the orbit is checked in detail. Now, there's a very important point. The point is what is the meteorite impact velocity on the Earth, the average velocity of meteorites entering the atmosphere is very high. It's between 10 and 70 kilometers per second. So please keep this in mind. Now, I will show you three different examples of flybys. One possible collision of, tip of two bodies, then a flyby by almost touching each other, and a far away flyby. Okay. Now, uh, in our model, we treated seven different uh, masses. Uh, we have the mass, very small ones, from asteroids to a body of 10 times, the moon for the determination of these collision statistics. So we have here one-tenth, approximately one-tenth of Ceres, Ceres, one-tenth of the moon, one-third of the moon, the moon, three times the moon, and 10 times the moon. So these are the masses here, and this is approximately this kind of bodies what we have. And we uh, treat these bodies so that everybody has this kind of mass. And when there is a collision, so it's a collision between two bodies of this size. So we cover most of the interesting uh, mass range of planetesimals. Now here you have such uh, an event when two bodies come very close, it's, you can here see uh, this 0 0.001 astronomical unit. And what I report is whenever they are inside this kind of radius, I report the position. You see here a flyby, nothing happens. There's one mass here, and the other mass is just going, passing around. This is a, a model of two uh, bodies of the, of the 
largeness of uh, one tenth of a series. But there is another one you see here, coming very close and having this kind of hyper, uh, hyperbola, which you know, and this one is also a hyperbola, but it goes really around. And please look at here at these points. These are equidistant from the point of view of time, so there is no change in the velocity. But here you see these points, they are coming closer and closer, and when you are very close, you have a very high velocity. So when you have a small body, the collision velocity is very high. But when you have, this is, for instance, a moon-sized body, and when it touches here, when the, we have the collision, it's not so high the collision velocity than we would be here. Now, this is now the one example where they almost collide. You have here the velocity up to some 21 kilometers per second. And here you can see how they come close. This is the time in thousand years. So after this is a, well, an example of some bodies colliding after 2.6 million years in our integration. You have the velocity in green here. It's larger. The largest is when they are very close. It's clear. And this is now in red is the close approach coming closer and closer, these two bodies. Now, this is an example of this very... Uh, very, very close collision, let's say. You see how the velocity is really growing up to more than 70 kilometers per second when they are very, very close. And you can see here again how the distance is varying in this uh, it's the time scale, 1.2 million years. But this is only one example. I have many, many of these encounters. Now, the simulation runs. I did now, seven different masses, I explained them from one-tenth of series to ten times the moon. So, the, these two bodies, they also always have two times uh, the one-tenth of series, and here two times the ten times the mass of the moon. This is just the integration for different uh, int runs, and what you can see here is maybe interesting. I put the Jupiter here in the distance of 5.2 astronomical no units. Here was no Jupiter. Here was a Jupiter in 1.6, 1.8, 1.7, 2.6. So I really tried to find out what is the influence or the possible influence of such a massive planet. And here you can see only one tenth of Jupiter. And these are some preliminary results. It's not really. Uh, the whole story, we have to put them into order, but at least you can see that when you have larger bodies, this is the velocity, you may wonder about this, uh, uh, this, uh, this velocity, it's in astronomical units per day, but when you have larger bodies, see it's 2.3, 10 to the minus 2, up to 0 0.4, so when you have larger masses, it's clear you have uh, larger velocities of encounters. Now, I divide it here into 0 to 30 degrees, 30 to 60, and 60 to 90 degrees. This is how it works. So this is how it really hits, how the collision is coming. This is a frontal collision, but you have also collisions which pass by. Oh, this is just to tell you a schematic view. This is the surface of one of the bodies and all these straight lines are how they collide and they come primarily in this equatorial plane which is in the plane of the orbits of all these uh, planetesimals and very few are coming from above and the length is just giving the velocity why, how they fit how they collide. An example of a run with a perturbing Jupiter here, you can see I have here velocities from very small velocities to very, very high velocities, and I divide again into three different domains in, uh, of, of 30 degrees, and uh, the mean velocity of all these encounters is very high. It's 63 kilometers per second for this example of a run of 400 bodies of one tenth of zeros, serious, uh, zeros, not zeros, okay, <laughs> three millions of years integration. This was the initial distribution, and it's here without the Jupiter. 
And there is a difference when there is a Jupiter, but this also has to be worked out. Now this was the first part. Uh, in this first part, we want to find out the statistics of the collisions. And now we deal with the collisions and the collision simulations. The objectives are elastoplastic solid state mechanics with brittle uh, failure, fragmentation, and we have self-gravity in it. And the track, we track different material, and what we are interested in is primarily water. So we have water uh, in form of ice, and we have basalt, and you will, you will see one example of such a collision. And the distribution before, during, and after such an impact. We chose this method, the smooth particle hydrodynamics, where some of you, many of you hopefully are uh, know how it works. It's like Ranchian method. We have a kind of particles. So these are not real particles, but these are kernels. This is uh, how a, a schematic view of this. This is the kernel and they feel these are the different, uh, the different particles, uh, SPH particles. Then we, we are uh, using a code which was de is developed in cooperation with the University of Tübingen. Most of the things were done by the people in Tübingen, but we are in very close collaboration and we are extending it to our purpose. So jump, just some formulas, you may know them, it's not so called, it's continuity equation, there's a mass conservation, then the cons conservation of momentum, but we have here the stress tensor which replaces the the pressure, then we have the energy conversation, and we have here the strain rate tensor. I don't want to explain everything here. Then we have the constitutive equation, and uh, with this rotation rate tensor, and it looks a little bit difficult, and in fact, uh, the program is not so easy, uh, as you can see from the formula. Now the equation of state, many people mentioned this equation of state, it's very important here, it connects the thermodynamic variables, the rho and p and the velocity to close, uh, to close the set of equations. So we have several analytical and semi-empirical approaches exist. We have the Mernigan and the Tillotson and this one which is not freely available. So what we used is this uh, equation of state for our numerical work to model the collisions. Now, this is the SPH is for solid state elastoplastic dynamics and what you have learned as I should have learned in uh, physics is that you have three domains here. This is the elastic domain where Hooke's law can be adapted. It's elastic dynamics. Then you have a domain here. This is a uh, uh, the plastic region here, but then from a certain moment on everything breaks and this is here the damage and brittle failure for the stress beyond material strengths. And we have here these kind of models what we use, this one for uh, region B and this one for region C. Now, uh, well, this is uh, also some explanation of how we are doing this. Now, uh, this is the von Mises yielding criterion. We have again here the stress tensor here and the fracture model, which is very important because you have inside here, you have uh, this region where you have uh, cracks here. And when they, now the tensor is working in the sense that it really is breaking it, it goes in, this in these two directions and uh, this, when it's large enough, local strain causes flaws to develop into the cracks that grow and have the speed and, uh, of sound until local stress is re uh, relieved. Okay, now the number of flaws is according to the Weibull, okay, uh, Weibull uh, distribution. And uh, yeah, this is one example. It's just a snapshot of this. We have here two Zeres. A smaller body, and the smaller body here, here it says 10% water. We have different water contents. This is only one example. The impact velocity is here, uh, six kilometers a second. We have 10,000 SPH articles, and it's a three dimensional computation, but you can see it much better in two dimensions. Here, the upper graph 
shows the inner energy and what you can see here how hot it is here it has approximately 1200 degrees kelvin that means the water and this is now the water the yellow one well, it doesn't work anymore no battery and uh, the yellow one is the water and you can see when you continue this computation you can see th how the water is going onto the second uh, body uh, of these two colliding bodies okay i'm running out of not only of time but only of battery okay <laughs> so summary and next steps well, these n-body simulation results, we have velocities and impact parameters in, let's say, early planetary systems, not only our own one, what we hope, uh, for different planetary masses and impact mass ratios, which is important from small asteroids to larger bodies. And uh, we have collision simulations, and what is important, what happens to the bodies uh, in with respect to the water ice content. We have different collision scenarios, hit and run. We had a very nice talk of this uh, yesterday morning, accretion, merging, erosion for different water distribution, on not only on the shell, but also inside. And the question is, can water be retained? And this will be hope uh, that we can answer it with combining this kind of our simulations with the n-body simulations. And uh, that was approximately what I wanted to tell you. So the, it's a good thing it's the last speaker of the session. The batteries are run out. We do have time for one question, perhaps. If it's, it's really so clear. Well, it's they are hungry. All the people <laughs> are hungry, <laughs> I think. OK, great. Okay, uh, so if there are no questions, um, uh, thank you very much. Okay. And thank you to all the speakers for today's session.